just want to take a second to uh, talk about the questions and the conclusion. Uh, first, I want to remind you that you should write your conclusion in paragraph form. So any information there I would see as a paragraph. Uh, so that means the questions that I'm asking you, you have to answer as if they don't exist. So when someone reads the paragraph, they don't have to refer to those questions. So make sure you have smooth transitions in there and you put everything in context. So, so again, it reads like a paragraph. A couple things, uh, just go over a couple main things. Restating your hypothesis, that should be pretty straightforward. I would just start out by saying the original hypothesis was and then restate yours. Then number two is just a brief statement. Uh, if you look at your graph, does the data generally support or not support your hypothesis? So you just need to make a statement the data supports or does not support your hypothesis. And then the rates and trends and give data to support. So here you might have said that, for example, on number two, you might have said the data supports my hypothesis. Now on number three, you're explaining why. What's the rate and trend of your graph that supports your hypothesis? And give three or so data statements, uh, data points to support your answer. So that would be how I taught you using the word respectively. So you might say, for example, uh, my when my MV was blank, blank, and blank, the RV averages were blank, blank, and blank, respectively. So that backs up what you're saying. And then finally, uh, why do you think you got the results you did? In the Pendulum Lab, why do you think angle had no effect? Why do you think um, length of string had an effect, and specifically the effect that you had? And why do you think mass had no effect? You can focus on just what was true for your lab. You don't have to focus on other students' labs. So focus on the variable you tested. And then finally, uh, paragraph two, state some sources of error in your lab. Think of things especially that would have affected you directly. And if you know how they had an effect on the outcome, that would be awesome to state the uh, way it affected the data. And another thing you could do is talk about limitations. I'd be like the number of trials you've done and stuff like that that you didn't have much control over and you couldn't really change. So uh, sort, uh, number of trials is definitely a big one for that. And then finally, and it goes along with the previous two, and you might state it while you're talking about them, how, what ways could you improve the experiment to get better, more reliable data? And then finally, uh, you had a manipulated and responding variable for your lab. Can you think of another manipulated variable that you might be able to test in the future? It doesn't mean that you're going to have to do it, but you want to close out giving people ideas of research that uh, is possible. And, you know, to be honest, you could simply pick a variable you didn't test. Like if you tested string length, you could ask, you know, I wonder what would happen with mass, etc. And you could get more creative. Try to identify both manipulated and responding variable, though. One last comment when you're writing your paper, write it in paragraph form for me. So you're writing your paragraph, maybe here's a sentence, here's another sentence, here's another sentence. Okay. It would be really helpful for me if you just, after you wrote your paragraph, you just sort of number where you answer them. So let's say I started answer number five here. It took uh, two sentences to answer, and then I answered uh, number six here. Just put a little six there, a little five there. It makes it easy for me to find the information when grading it. Hope that helps.